Good morning, everybody. I really loved Kyle's message this past weekend on unity. And yet, it is so difficult right now. I was just on the phone talking uh, with my cousin in Switzerland. She helps lead a church over there. And I said, well, how's the church going? And she said, well, pretty good, but the past three years have sure seen a lot of fracturing and disunity among Christians here in Switzerland. She said, so our main goal at church is to keep us all focused on God and not politics, which can be so divisive in Switzerland. And I laughed out loud because she's halfway uh, across the world, across a continent, across an ocean, in a country known for neutrality, and is experiencing the exact same situation we are in America. Different political parties, different agendas, yet disunity is still a challenge. And that's probably why the Bible tells us so many times to be unified. Because it is so hard. Because it goes against our human nature. You know, the Bible doesn't say, thou shalt breathe. Nobody has to be commanded to breathe because it's natural. But start looking for unity as a theme in the Bible, in Jesus' teaching, and Paul's teaching, in the letters of John, the letters of Peter, and you start to see it's all over the place. Unity is one of the main things we have to be called back to again and again. And this is why, as Kyle pointed out this past week in Ephesians 4.3 says, make every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Because it's hard. Because life gets messy. Relationships get messy. And times of stress particularly constrain relationships. And we end up hurting each other and destroying the unity that we should be working so hard to preserve. Plus, we have an enemy, a spiritual enemy, and his goal is to destroy our unity. So, and this sounds like a contradiction, but fight for unity, fight for peace. And God's empowered you to do that. As Kyle pointed out, God's given each of us the ability to be patient and kind and loving through actions and words by the Holy Spirit in us. And so it's our responsibility as Christians to use that power so that our loving unity is our great witness among the nations. And so here's a point of application for you. Everybody that you see today, in fact, Christian or not Christian, ask yourself, what's one point of commonality I share with that person? And then choose to honor that common ground. You'll find yourself building more bridges, with sometimes some surprising people, and sometimes getting into good conversations about faith. Think about that. Let's fight for unity and have a great day.